So, does the Bible condone slavery? Uh, a lot of people will reject the Bible completely just because they think it condones slavery. Well, I'll tell you that it does not. Um, for one, back in the day, uh, people would actually agree to slavery, slavery for um, a certain amount of time. Like this one guy, he agreed to slavery for seven years so he could marry this guy's daughter. It's actually more of an agreement. It's like having a job. It's like signing a contract for a job. The first case, actually, of a mistreated slave in the Bible, or mistreated slaves, was uh, God's people in Egypt. And you know what God did? Ever heard of a uh, let my people go? That's right. He set them free. He said, now, I won't lie and say that people didn't use the scriptures to justify doing evil things with slavery, like they did in uh, America, for example. They did uh, tell the slaves, you know, a Bible verse about, you know, obeying their masters just, you know, to treat them evil. But they skipped out on the, you know, 10 other ones that explain they're supposed to pay them fair wages. They're supposed to be just to them. They're supposed to be kind to them. So it's not slavery like you would think. It's more like having a job. And you're supposed to honor your manager and do everything as if you're doing it for the Lord. Now, the verse everyone always quotes if they're, you know, talking about slavery in the Bible is, when it says, uh, you know, servants, slaves, obey your masters with fear and trembling as if you're doing it for the Lord. Uh, and then they pretty much stop it there. But I'm going to read some of the other ones that you probably haven't heard. Okay, Colossians 4.1. Masters, treat your slaves justly and fairly, knowing you also have a master in heaven. Now, for the one who works, his wages are not counted as a gift, but as his due. I mean, if you work, you're supposed to get paid. Uh, Deuteronomy 24.15 You shall give him wages on the same day before the sun sets, lest he cry out and you be guilty of sin. I mean, even uh, if someone does work, you're supposed to give him money the same day. You know, we don't even have that today. We have to wait usually, what, bi-weekly? So, I mean, God says conditions to be even better than we have in our modern jobs. 1 Corinthians 7.21 Were you called by God as a slave? It shouldn't concern you. But if you can be free, by all means, take the opportunity. So you're going to tell me the Bible supports slavery and says, if you can get free, by all means, get free. Yeah, that just doesn't, doesn't work out. Okay, this one doesn't make sense at all if the Bible's in support of slavery. 1 Corinthians 7.23 You were bought at a price, that's talking about the blood of Jesus that he paid to redeem our souls. Do not become the slaves of men. Do not become the slaves of men. That's that's what slavery is. Do not become the slaves of men. But yeah, the Bible's in support of slavery. And here's some verses and about slaves and masters in Ephesians 6 5. Slaves, obey your human masters with fear and trembling. That's the one they always say is like pro slavery. In the sincerity of your heart as to Christ. Don't work only while being watched in order to please men, but as slaves of Christ, do God's will from your heart. Render service with a good attitude as to the Lord and not to men, knowing that whatever good each one does, slave or free, he will receive this back from the Lord. And masters, treat them the same way without threatening them. Does that sound like the slavery you know of? Without threatening them? Because you know that both their and your masters is in heaven, and there is no favoritism with him. Now, unfortunately, people will give up their soul because they think the Bible's racist. First of all, you know, race isn't mentioned at, hardly at all in the Bible, but especially not um, because, oh, this race was enslaved. You know, so the first one that was enslaved, the Jews, um, God's people, God set them free. And um, unfortunately, people like uh, Cassius Clay, Muhammad Ali, the boxer, for example, he, you know, gave up Christianity. He said that's the white man's religion and went to um, the Muslim faith, the Quran. You know, <laughs> I guarantee he wouldn't have done that if he knew this. Muhammad was kind of a pretty horrible person if you actually study his life, especially his compared to Jesus's. I mean, everyone knows he, um, you know, had molested a little girl starting at six years old, uh, consummated that marriage um, at nine years old. Most people actually know about that. What they don't know is he actually was a slave owner and he owned black slaves and he referred to them as raisin heads. That's a fact. Study his life. He was a horrible person. He was not a good person. So... I'm saying that's not the black man's religion. Jesus loves all people regardless of race. Jesus wasn't white. I don't know if he was black. He was probably somewhere in between because he was Middle Eastern. You know, but he loves you. You know, he wants to save your soul. 
There's no race involved. He died for all of us. Um, he if, in the Bible it said somewhere, you know, you know, some racist people will say this verse is uh, about you know mixing races. You know, talking about being unequally yoked. That's talking about believers and unbelievers. That's another one some people try to say is racist. It's talking about if you're a Christian, you shouldn't marry someone who's probably never going to become a Christian. It'll so if you think the Bible is racist, it's not. Call in the name of Jesus and get saved. He wants us all up in heaven. I'm telling you this because I want you up in heaven. And if you are a racist and you think the Bible is supporting that, you write it wrong. It's not true. You need to change your mind. You know, whatever you think. You know, maybe God will just blow all our mind. We get up there and he's going to be Asian or something. I don't know. But God loves us all. Call in the name of Jesus get saved.